Yo guys, this is going to be a bit of a different video, but fuck it, I'm going to roll with it. So I, uh, I wrote the script, and my laptop decided to just fucking die on me, so you know how it is. I've rewrote the script, I had to hit a couple of, you know, D underscore bongs, but I'm going to have to hit one right now, just for the intro, one sec. So I've been a gamer since I was about three, you know, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, PC, all that. I've built PCs, pissed about with music creation, video editing. My point is a mix of hobbies is a good way to avoid burnout. If you spend eight hours a day, seven days a week playing video games, it's not exactly great for your mentality. It's really a great way to reset your sleep pan since you're getting real sunlight, especially if you go for a nice drive somewhere for a good walk up in the countryside. If you're able to, if you live in the city, uh, I'm sure there's plenty to do, but if you're able to, yeah, go out and touch grass, because it is nice. The smells and stuff they do, uh, plus you can go smoke a dupe if you want to, which is pretty chill. And this is especially important if you're streaming, since it's pretty hard on people with anxiety. I mean, from my experience, I wouldn't recommend a face cam if you're doing, you know, eight hour streams, 12 hour streams, you know, seven days a week, that shit is draining. Don't focus on the numbers, you should just keep it as a hobby, you know? Maybe upload the clips to YouTube if you care about that, funny moments, you wanna preserve that, preserve that memories. I've got old clips I like to preserve on my channel, for example. You gotta remember to try and stay true to yourself, you know, not sell out too much. Uh, I mean, get a bag, but don't sell out too badly, and try not get into gambling, because that shit is fucked up. Gamb they spend I don't know how streamers spend billions on gambling, it's crazy they're all crazy don't force yourself to stream either or to try and meet some artificial deadline that you come up with in your head you know it's, it's a long graph you might just blow up you might not you know take your time improve your intro screens your graphics your microphone quality all that good stuff i learned pretty early on that working out is amazing for you know self-confidence which in turn helps boost your mental health but it's not about aesthetics you don't want to chase roid monsters on you know fucking youtube and instagram real strength comes from being able to protect those that you love and uh, those that are around you stand up to injustice and all that moral fucking bullshit you don't want to get addicted to all these <laughs> artificial chemicals it's just cancer you're just killing yourself especially if you're a teen your hormones and shit are doing everything for you you can do basic body weight exercises at home they're a great way uh, to exercise sit-ups push-ups body dips squats all sorts there are some amazing free apps that you can use and you'll see a transformation in a month honestly so a great task you should definitely try Another great form of exercise, if you're into it, is combat sports, boxing, MMA, kickboxing, uh, you know, whatever you're into, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Karate, it's, it's all good for you, any type of exercise, rugby, I, I did rugby personally in high school, it was great fun. Good for my build as well, good for cardio, even though cardio fucking sucks, not gonna lie, I hate cardio. And then being able to check that progress within yourself, not to sound arrogant, but you know, if you look in the mirror and you see a difference, you feel positive about it, you're happy about it. A great example of this for me personally is with boxing, with my footwork, now being able to get around my opponents, you know, to go for body blows, you know, just soft sparring but being able to get around them being able to dash backwards and forward so i'm going to be talking about driving cars and modifying cars and is it actually worth it especially in this economy because you know how it is in the uk it's fucked with insurance a little background about me i've driven cars legally since i was able to however my dad taught me how to drive in a old Merkay series you know the shit boxes when i was like eight years old in the car park i've driven probably hundreds of cars due to a job uh, i had at the time i've owned a 2005 scooby mx5 mb modified i drove a formula 3 car at palmer uh, as a track experience day along with like a clio with a dog box transmission and all sorts like that also a le mans lp3 car and that's why i'll be talking about why it's important to learn proper car control safely because it can save your life if you live in cold wet or icy areas or snowy areas and you don't understand car physics weight transfer and other dynamics that i'm going to be talking about 
So, most new drivers should be getting a shitbox 600cc to 1.4 litre, depending on the, the person's age, you know, due to how insurance is at the moment, especially in my country. I'm going to show a couple of examples on screen now. So, when you're buying a car, you want to use more than just face fuck scam marketplace and, you know, search around eBay, request pics. If you know nothing about cars, ask a family friend for help. You want to check for rust, shake the wheels vertically up and down, left and right, all that. Check the oil, check the lights, test drive it and see it in the daylight. Because do not ever buy a car at night. Don't ever buy a car at night. And yeah, make sure you test drive it. Also, don't forget to run the reg plate using uh, the government website just to make sure the tax and MOT status of the vehicle. And you can check the MOT history. Now, if you're into cars like a lot of us are, the first mods you want to do are tires. Not semi slicks, but good road tires. Pilot Sports are a great example from my experience. Also, upgrading the brake pads. I used uh, ECB yellow stuff, but you know, you gotta find what suits your preference, so research. BHP really doesn't matter. Torque is better because it's for acceleration anyway, so that's the feeling you really want. Brake horsepower is for top speed, a lot of people get that confused. Driving a slow car fast is a million times better on the street than a fast car slow. On the track, it's a completely different story. Like driving a Formula 3 car around a corner, uh, 150, the g-force you get is insane. But on the street, I mean, you'll die hitting a tree at 40. So brakes and tyres, if you want to spend a little bit more, then coil overs, but don't cheap out. Adjustable or get an LSD. One thing to consider when modifying though, is that mods cost a lot and it costs a lot to run cars and insurance at the moment. So if you don't have the money to do it, don't do it. Tires is all you need and a service really, but it has to be a full service. The rest, if you can afford it, caliper upgrades help too from a bigger model that it's normally okay clearance wise to fit them on. It depends though, I know Subaru it's okay. But you're going to need to learn how to drive your car before you drive fast. And since most of you are going to start off you know, in front wheel drive shit boxes, it's best to learn in wet conditions with, you know, pretty meh tires, since you can practice understeer very easily. And that's an important skill to have, as uh, I've learned many times from nearly crashing cars and binning, well, curbing a wheel on a Clio. Not, not a crash, not a real crash. Doesn't count. Another thing you can have on the front wheel drive platform is lift off oversteer. So with front wheel drive, the front tires control movement and power. So if you overpower them, like in a corner while they're also turning, they'll spin and they won't turn and that is understeer. So you go straight on instead of, you know, going around the corner like you should do. So that's when you go straight into the tree. So you see the tree and then die. However, if you lift off around a corner, the weight shifts since the engine RPM drops and the back end can get loose. So this causes lift off oversteer, which means basically the back end drifts around the corner, which can be corrected with, you know, counter steering. But that's a whole kind of words. We can talk about this all day, really. So you can practice this safely at around 8 to 15 miles an hour in wet conditions. There are a load of other things like trail braking, heel toe downshifting, rev matching uh, on downshifts, how to build boost and maintain it for, for launching or for rolling starts, learning counter steer. But you gotta remember, you can't let it consume you. Like all things in life, shit's addictive. Live streaming, porn, drugs, cars, and they all cost a lot of money these days and it's all about balance in life. Same with raves, if you go to illegal ones or not whatever substances you're taking, you gotta be balanced and take breaks. So I'm gonna be talking about drugs, parties, sex, you know, is it the deal to the hype, is it worth it? I'd say from a certain age, yeah, it does, but of course in moderation, and this is in-game in Gary's Mod on a role-playing server, 
and it's because you'd be building memories that you'll remember a decade on, 12 years on, you'll still laugh and joke about these same memories with the same friends, and that's important. Socialising is good because it's good for your mental health and it helps you practice being able to speak to people, especially if you struggle with eye contact. You know, depending on the type of party and the substances you're going to take, it's important that you test this shit. So you get a test kit on Amazon, don't buy IRL crypto, you know how that shit works. House parties, if you're going to go to one, make sure you know some or a decent amount of people there. Take someone with you, at least one person, so you know you're trusted not to get spiked and you've got someone to watch your shit all night. Also, you want to observe how people act, because people act differently when they're fucked up and they can they can just go crazy and start doing some start just start squaring up on people you don't want to be doing this shit every weekend and i know you guys won't listen to what i'm saying but once a month every three months if you're gonna take md also take bombs because it destroys your nose cat is strong as fuck so take that shit slow and take tiny keys or else you'll die off early if you need to throw up or you're feeling sick you need to go fucking tacky chun so basically it means tactical chunder which means throwing up if you're american and you don't know what i'm saying it will fix your night, honestly, like, just steal some cunt's mouthwash from the toilet, and it's light work, really. For raves and uni parties, illegal events in the woods, you know, shit like that, well, I, I mean, I've seen some shit at events like this, people fighting, pulling knives, getting robbed, you know. So, if you got some boys that you can rely on to throw hands if needed, or at least back you up, then it's not too bad, but you gotta be on guard all night, and I wouldn't recommend it fully, you know? But, uh, get off when fed come. Come home early, because the after parties are always fucking dead. Trust me, they're not worth it. And also, don't buy anything from the boss man, nah. Because, uh... Yeah, it's gonna be just fucking paracetamol crushed up, and stay with, a, stay with at least one friend all night. Yeah, also cocaine is a complete waste of money. If you know your substances, you'd want to move to a different amphetamine-based substance. But this is about harm reduction in Roblox and Gary's mom. Benzos for anxiety, but they are very, 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 very addictive. So fucking be very careful with them. Only use them for panic attacks. Uh, two milligram is the NHS standard dose. So maybe if you're going to the shops. However, you have to be very careful with them and take tolerance breaks. Okay, I'm going to quickly touch on sex. I know this subject is pretty uh, subjective i mean personally i think it's just sex a lot of people aren't able to separate the emotional connection to the physical one you know but that's just my opinion i mean i'm retarded so i don't know what i'm talking about but i think as you get older it helps to move on since you get used to you know going through breakups and relationships fuck buddies or whatever orgies grind of park meets at 3 a.m you gotta stay safe get sti checks even though it's fucking shit with the nhs i mean it's a joke seriously and i think i've got like the same answer for sexuality it really doesn't matter don't care, no one should, let people do whatever they want, be yourself, do whatever, come to terms with what you like, you gotta accept who you are and learn to love yourself and it takes fucking years, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but that's all that matters. You guys have been working on this for a little while, this is the D-slop edition, so the too long didn't read. Balance is basically the key to life, whether it's hobbies, work, partying, drugs, gaming, exercise, content creation, you shouldn't care what people think, you should work on yourself for yourself and find out what works for you. Everybody's different, has different, you know, fucking issues, different upbringings. So just find your own thing and work with it. Fuck what anyone says, fuck what anyone thinks. Put your headphones in, ignore the world. Yeah, stay safe out there, soundy, debong out.